You've made it to the last lesson in NativeLang.com series on using the IPA to pronounce another language. This time I'm going to build on the previous videos that introduced vowels, consonants, and syllables, and move on to features that apply to longer units of speech. First off, it's important to consider that when we record speech or listen to speech, we don't actually find things like breaks between words or pauses between sentences. We don't hear punctuation or capital letters. Instead, we hear a very fluid stream of sounds. There's a linguistic term for that stream of sounds, an utterance. An utterance is a chunk of spoken language. The concept of utterances focuses on speech instead of squeezing spoken language into categories proper to written language like words and sentences and paragraphs. This plays into phonetic transcriptions in IPA. We don't need to use things like punctuation marks, word breaks, or line breaks in IPA. That also leads to another observation about speech. Speakers don't make uh, clear divisions between sounds, between the individual phonemes when they're spoken out loud. Phonemes that are pronounced next to each other tend to become more alike. This is a process known as assimilation. Here's an example of assimilation with the phoneme N. The N in the word lane has the alveolar nasal N, but the N in language has the velar nasal ng. Notice that ng comes before the velar stop g. This n has assimilated to the velar sound that comes after it. I'm telling you that n and ng are two different sounds in the words lane and language. However, if you're an English speaker, you probably think that these two sounds are simply versions of the same sound. They're both n sounds. This points to an abstract concept, the concept of allophones versus underlying phonemes. In these examples, n and ng are two allophones of the same underlying phoneme. The abstract phoneme is n, but it's realized in different contexts by different allophones. Allophone is a Greek word for other sound, and that's really the way that a speaker of a language hears different sounds as versions of the same sound. We can visually distinguish phonemes from allophones in IPA by enclosed, enclosing allophones in brackets. These two sounds enclosed in brackets are different allophones of that same phoneme N. Speech isn't just phonemes strung together into syllables and utterances. There are other features. One other feature is known as accent. Stress accent involves saying one syllable of a word louder than the surrounding syllables. We do this in English with words that have a fixed accent. For instance, in the word hotel, the second syllable is pronounced louder than the first. On the other hand, in the word hostel, the first syllable is louder than the second. So in hotel, the second syllable is given a stress accent. It's weighted. Stress accent is indicated in IPA by a small straight apostrophe before the stressed syllable, like this. Notice that the syllable break symbol is dropped when the stress accent is added. Words can have a pitch accent instead in some languages. Pitch involves raising or lowering the tone, as in music. For instance, the ancient Greek word autos has a high pitch on the last syllable, while the word atonos has a high pitch on the first syllable. The other syllables have a lower pitch. Words can be distinguished that way. We can represent basic pitch changes in IPA with an acute accent above high tone vowels and a grave accent above low tone vowels. We've been applying these features at the level of syllables and words. What if we apply those features, like languages routinely do, to the level of utterances and sentences? When we get to that level, we can see that we use stress in English to differentiate I didn't go versus I didn't go versus I didn't go. I'm using stress to convey emphasis or to nuance the meaning. We can consider intonation similarly. English speakers regularly use intonation at the level of a sentence to ask a question. You raise your voice at the end of a sentence to ask a question, right? And intonation lowers at the end of a typical statement. I've just given you examples of prosody. 
the application of features like intonation and stress at the level of an entire phrase or an entire utterance, rather than at the level of a single phoneme or a single syllable. I've now covered the basics of vowels, consonants, syllables, and prosody. You can start to use your understanding of the IPA as you learn languages. Check out the web page or workbook for more practice, and move on to the intro to phonology for a deeper understanding of how pronunciation works. All the best on your journeys with IPA, and thanks for learning with me.